Well, at any time during the uh, this, if you need something, you let us know, and we will make sure that whatever you need to drink or a DFI will provide that for you. You understand that? Right? Okay. Have anything to eat still? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I know. Especially now. Handle that. They've offered me plenty of things. They've turned it down. They've been pretty nice to me. Yeah. Kevin, do you know where you are? I'm in the police department. For sale, yeah. For sale, police department. Yeah. Police yeah. department. Yeah. Reason, basically, you know, we won't be sure. You know, you know what you're doing. You know that by talking to us, we want to be sure that you've been treated right. And since we have not seen you for the last few hours, we want to make sure everybody's treated you good and treated you right. Yeah, they felt yeah that almost annoyed how <laughs> they keep asking like, okay, if I need anything to drink or eat. Uh, okay, well, just start feeling sick about the last half hours. Just nausea. Yeah, just. Kind of all getting to me and Are you kind of like some little acid reflux and stuff for the yeah, nervousness and everything. But you feel okay about talking to us? Yeah. Well, you remember Craig Overby yeah. and I'm Mark Mag, and you'll recognize us the two FBI agents that we have with you earlier. Asked for you. Okay, great. For the record, um, <clears throat> we want to just to make sure that you understand your rights. We're going to have you read this to us. And uh, can you read mine? Yeah. Okay. I mean, just for the record, it's, it's part of our job as FBI to just make sure that your rights are protected. Yeah. And that's why we want to make sure that you understand these. And so I'll begin with this. This form is um, one that's been produced for the for Cell Police Department, so you'll see their name at the top. Okay. And it's the one you wrote. You must understand your rights before we ask you any questions. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court or other proceedings. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we question you and to have him with you during questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer and good one, a lawyer will be appointed for you. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you will still have the right to stop the questioning at any time. You'll, you also have the right to stop the questioning at any time until you talk to a lawyer. I read the statement of my rights and it has been read to me and I understand what my rights are. Is there any part of that that you want to go over or is there anything that's not clear to you? Uh, right. Okay. And you know today's date? I'm tired right now. I you know today's date? Uh, 14th. Yeah, it's the late 14th. And changed to mid midnight and changed over yet. And mm -hmm. it's 10 14. Yeah. Okay. Sign your name right there. Yeah, I'm just laying asleep. I ain't. <laughs> you get up at two in the morning. They think I'm over. Three in the morning. Let's also read this where it says waive your rights if you would read this uh, chapter for me. I hereby voluntarily and intentionally waive my rights, and I am willing to make a statement and answer questions. I do not want a liar. I understand and know what I am doing. No promises or threats have been made to me, and no pressure or coercion of any kind has been used against me. We want to make sure that's true, because we haven't been with you for the last yeah. few hours. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. And once again, put the same date. I'm sorry, we didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, there wasn't any pressure or coercion. It's what I mean. It was like, um, you would probably be a lot better off for you if you just cooperated with us and talked right now. Do you remember who it was that said that? I'm probably not good with names. Okay, was he a, you know who he was with? Was he one of, was he FBI or was he? I think he was FBI. Okay. And now it's 10, 15, approximately a minute later. And this is the certification that we just get her all read along with you. Go ahead and read aloud. I hereby certify that the 
quarterly morning and labor rides were read by me to above the signatory, and that he also read it and has fixed his signature here to in my presence. Okay. And you're okay, sorry. I'm 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 sorry. I'm
how high the initial is. Of the FBI. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. And or other law enforcement officers, including the OSBI. Okay, so this. Just to keep this in perspective, this could be any uh, law enforcement officer in the state of Oklahoma. Okay. Is that clear to you? Do you have any questions about who these people, uh, what agencies they could be with? It could be the OSBI, the Purcell Police Department, it could be the FBI, it could be... What the, exactly does, is the OSBI? Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. Yeah, I just... Like it's not it's Bureau, it's up, we're the federal. Yeah, they're state. Okay. okay. Basically, uh, they would have a criminal jurisdiction. Yeah, I guess I don't see why it doesn't matter. Well, okay. Now, your car, can you describe the, the car? Uh, it's a uh, silver, gray silver, 98 vehicle saber. Okay. Have you had your license plate number memorized? No. I think, would you recognize it as MPP116? I think that's it. Just not 100% sure. Yeah. Oh, uh, God, I can tell you what I'm just playing. You know what year it is? The car? Or, yeah, the 1998. And where is it parked currently? Uh, right outside my apartment, pretty much. Uh, uh, it's pretty much right outside my bedroom window, kind of. Right there in the parking lot. Is there any way that we can identify this vehicle other than the tag number? Is there something in it that you could specifically say is this Buick with Saber? Oh, there's a bumper stickers on the back. What are those bumper stickers? Uh, one of them says uh, anybody but Bush. And the uh, other one says uh, U.S. government philosophy, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. <laughs> <laughs> we don't hold that against you, by the way. He and I ran against the government probably for you to do so. And we have our car, we have our moments. <laughs> okay, so you're, uh, and, and to re re iterate this with you, you have a Buick Saber in 1998. It's silver. Yeah. It's uh, got yeah, two stickers on it that was uh, identified. And the vehicle tag may be MPP 116. Yeah. Okay. And then you're, you're give me your apartment again. Apartment. Your address. Uh, 1000 North 8. I'm going to ask him something. Yeah, because I'm out of the bus. Where's the bicycle? You don't have a time? No. Uh, well, I, I took it apart, but I mean, it's, uh, most of it's just right under the bed. Oh, okay. You took it apart for the bed. Oh, uh, the, like, the main frame and the back wheel are under the bed, and the rest of it's in. There's, like, a big duffel bag in the closet with the air conditioner. That's okay. where all the pieces are. Oh, okay. So, See, yeah, we, I don't even know if they've been in there yet. So, yeah. I don't know. Taking it apart so I can you know, transport it out. I see. So it's 1000 North 8th for Selling Line? Yeah. I was guessing the trunk of your car. No, there's nothing in the car. What's your apartment number? 115. 115. And it's uh, downstairs? Yeah. And uh, I'm having a hard time seeing it in this light. Tell me that zip again. Seven three zero eight zero. Okay. And we will not be searching any places of business, so I will just draw a line through there. Okay. Let me ask you, is there anything relevant where you work, like a locker or anything yeah. that would be relevant to this? Okay. And Kevin, if you would just uh, print your name up here. Credit. Uh -huh. And if you would initial each one of these paragraphs that we've gone over, again, uh, that you're authorizing the law enforcement officer in the OSBI, FBI, and other local or state agencies to conduct a search of your vehicle, part of your apartment, and your apartment to identify here. I think that the full name, middle name, too? Yes, or if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
change it to include the FBI and the OSBI people and the new member would be associated with the assistance of those agencies. Uh, and then the House part, the Department 115, just that. And then this is not an issue here. And then sign your name here. That's okay. That's okay. It's the information that's correct. Okay. Craig and I. When you were in school, you were English major. I uh, never declared a major. Is so, that where you were leaning? Well, I was probably intending on being. Yeah. Do you see? I noticed that you liked um, Hunter Thompson. Do you see yourself like a writer? I always wanted to be, but I just didn't really have the skill. I mean, I, I haven't wrote anything in years. Are you? A, were you ever a journalist? You know, where you would write journals? And no. Were you that type of guy? That would write a lot of journals. Yeah, you know, well, I do have a you know a blog and a, like a online oh, journal good. thing I write in. I haven't even wrote it yet, hardly in a couple of months. Well, when you were writing your blog, uh, what would you write? What kind of, what would you do? Mainly, what just, about? mainly just, I mean, like what happened to me during the day. You know, it's like all my diary. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um, kind of go back. We, we had a, you know, the day just kind of went wham, wham, wham. You know, it just took everybody kind of by surprise, I think. Um, yeah, we, we were definitely surprised. We were shocked yeah. about our discovery with you, and it was a complete surprise to both of us. But we think you. I think at some point you realize you had to do the right thing and tell tell what happened. Yeah. And uh, why don't you go right back from the very start? When did when did this kind of thought first occur to you? To maybe do something like this. Uh, How long has this been with you? A couple of months, probably. Uh, you know, I was telling one of the guys earlier. Doug, you know, I don't know if it has anything to do with the medication I'm ordering a lot, but because it started about the same time I went back on it. Uh, now, the first time you were on it, did you have that problem? No. I, the first time I took the medication a year or two ago, it uh, seemed fine. But uh, then about a month and a half ago, I got back on it again. And then, yeah, ever since I started taking it again, I've just been like, eating constantly. Just from the minute I get home to the minute I go to sleep, and like, I eat. Or, Gained probably 20, 30 pounds in the last month. And about the same time, I just seemed like started having all these you know, weird fantasies and everything. When did you think the first time in your life, I, and, and we understand this, I mean, it's, what, what you experience is nothing unusual. There are some people that fantasize, you know, about different things that, for instance, one guy might fantasize being with three different women. And, that, and that's kind of what turns him on. And some people, their fantasies may go a little more violent. You know, some people, they might fantasize about handcuffing somebody and having sex. And it, it maybe progresses a little bit. But when do you first think you start having, you know, fantasies of this nature? Was it as a teenager? Did you have this? Yeah, it was all recently. Can you describe what your fantasy is for us, for the record? Well, it started off as uh, cannibalism. Uh, you know, just the... Uh, you know, I wanted to you know, know what, what it tasted like. And just the thought of uh, eating, you know, someone, just, you know, was appealing to me. But then, uh, you know, it kept kind of evolving from there because uh, I'm, you know, sexually frustrated. I haven't had sex in four years. Uh, was it with um, when you went out to San Francisco? Did you? No, I was. Uh, it was a uh, well. I went out to. Uh, I went out to Nevada to stay with that guy and his uh, wife uh, a couple of times. Can you say their names? Because I, I forgot. Or I, I we know it was. We just you told us you had a handy guy in the Navy. That's all. Oh, his name is Christopher Lansdale. And, uh, L A N S D A L E. Yeah. Christopher Lansdale. He's in the Navy. Yeah. Okay. And you say he was stationed in Nevada. Yeah. Do you uh, know what base it is? Uh, Fowling was the name of the town. Uh, it was a naval air station. Okay. And, um, 
now he's stationed there in Fort Worth somewhere. I don't know the name of the station now. Oh, he's down at Fort Worth Naval Air yeah. Station. I mean, yeah. I've been by there. But, um, anyway, uh, and, it, uh, and like the second time I went out there, uh, I went out there, uh, you know, like me, you know, like I'm his best friend, and then this girl was like, uh, there's this other girl, Christina Bray, she was like his wife's best friend, and we, you know, both took a bus out there together to go stay with him for a couple of weeks. And uh, we ended up at the end of it, you know, like when we came back to Oklahoma, going out a few times. It was, uh, we went out like four or five times and had sex a couple of times, and then she just like stopped returning my phone calls. And uh, well, that, that, was, that was the first and the last time I've ever had sex. So. Well, what was it like with her? Was it you describe it? Uh, well, I, you know, I'm very shy, and it was pretty awkward for me. I mean, she. I, I like couldn't take the hit. You know, she was like, she didn't even really want to go on a date. It, it, it turned out that's the reason she probably stopped taking my calls. Is she didn't want a boyfriend. She just wanted someone to have sex with, like once a week or two. And uh, I, and you know, I kind of wanted a girlfriend, and I guess she wasn't okay with that, and so stopped talking to me. Okay. Uh, now, if if you heard about Jeremy Dahmer, uh, Jeffrey, Dahmer. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Dahmer, Dahmer, that's it. Uh, we on the internet because I've never, really, kind of yeah, I've never really studied any of them in depth. I have a on my DVD rack in the living room. You'll see there's a uh, like a two disc DVD set of it's like four episodes of some uh, A and E special uh, ones like over uh, Manson. And I can't even remember who they are. There's like three of them, three different killers, and then the fourth one, like you know, just the kind of the investigative methods they use to find them. I mean, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't, at the time, you know, it wasn't like, oh, I want to do this. You know, it was just, it's like, oh, these, these are kind of interesting. So, did, did that, as you were, were planning this out, did your knowledge of investigations that you've learned from watching Andy, did that play into any of this? Did you think about, well, this is what I need to do? Because, you know, we all have experience of watching TV. Yeah. Feeling sick. Um, just uh, very slightly, huh? I mean, I didn't know. I didn't know much. I don't watch a lot of TV. I don't watch a lot of TV, but I, you know, thought about <laughs> trying to imagine like steps I could take. Give yourself a second. Yeah, I might need some water, but okay. Let's see if I can. we're gonna uh, take a break here in the interview and I'll note that it is now Hello. Uh, get you a couple what time do you have, Craig? Near Watts. Ten thirty four. It's now ten thirty a bottle of water. Thank you. And we're gonna ask for a bottle of water. <laughs> Pardon me, I'm just not used to talking this much. It keeps drying my mouth out. It's usually pretty quiet in the house much. Thank you. Talk to anyone. I hate to hear the telephone. Is it? I'll tell you, the thing about my personality is I'm the kind of guy. I think you're the same way, but like in my office, I have things in a certain way. I mean, I put things in a certain place. Are, are you a planner? Are you a guy that likes to plan? Not really. Okay. Yeah. I certainly plan this out. I mean, I've been thinking about it for at least a month. So, about a month. Now, it wasn't specifically the girl in question, or what? No, I, I told the guy earlier, could have really been anyone. I mean, age and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't necessarily, you know, pedophile thing either. I mean, age and even gender didn't even really matter to me. I just, uh, at first I just wanted to basically to uh, eat someone, and then it turned into, while I'm at it, I'm going to, you know, uh, 
you get off, you have sex with them. You know. well, were you going to have sex before or after, or both? Uh, well, my, my plan, my original plan, uh, the way I had envisioned it all going was I was going to just uh, like grab them and. I stay in first. Yeah, I understand. Well, I did kind of favor this girl a little. I'd seen her, and I was like, you know, I, I was kind of like, well, I'd really like her. But then, as I saw her more and more, I, you know, I'd think, no, I can't hurt her. You know, she's nice, and I know her too well. And you mentioned What's her name for the record? I didn't even know it until this happened. It was Jamie Bolin or something like that. How did you learn of her name? Newspaper. newspaper. I didn't even know her name until today. Is the account of the newspaper's description of Jamie Bowen the same girl that we're talking about for the purposes of this? Seems like it. I, I, I had no idea she was 10. I, I would have sworn she was probably 12 or 13. Maybe she just was. for the record describe it before you continue on. Describe her? Yeah, her physical appearance. She was, a, uh, you know, had thin red hair, uh, glasses. She was a uh, real chubby. And where did she live? Uh, upstairs and across. Do you know the apartment number? I was 115, so maybe two, I think like 213. But it was open across from you? Yeah, upstairs okay. and across the hall. I just want to make sure I was clear on that, who it was. And you go ahead with Mr. Overby's questions. Um, I don't know if you remember when we first talked, we mentioned her, and you said, you know, I, I could never hurt because she reminds me of my sister. Yeah. Was that, why did you say that? Was that true, or were you at the time were you trying to throw us off? Or? That was, uh, yeah, more or less something I thought of after I already did it. Okay. You thought that you could tell us later if you were ever asked, hey, I could never do this because she kind of looks like my sister anyway. Kind of, yeah. Did that play any part whatsoever? You got raged towards your sister? Or no, not your at sister? all. Right. Yeah, I mean, this is, I said, um, you know, I hate my parents finding out about this, and especially her, you hate her finding out about this. You love your family? Yeah. Okay. Um, I've always been a mama's boy, too. So. No, we'll get around really, with that. Really hate it. Because this, this will probably literally kill her because she was in the best of health anyway. Yeah. Now, um, tell us, as kind of last month, you start thinking about this, tell us the plan that you came up with in your area. Uh, well, like I said, yeah, I was just going to grab whoever, and I had some handcuffs and some duct tape. I was going to you know, handcuff them and put the duct tape over their mouth so they could, couldn't scream. Where's the handcuffs now? Uh, where are they? Uh, they're in, yeah, I have a bag in the closet uh, that has a bunch of, like, porn and sex toys and stuff in it. Okay. And they're in there. How long Which you closet have? is it? Is it the one where well, the one, no, the, the yeah, one the one, the, uh, the one that I was in. Where the Luke big walk in closet. How long have you had that bag with the porn and the handcuffs and all that stuff? Well, some of the stuff I've had for years. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't think anything in its recent edition. What kind of, tell us what's in that bag. Uh, well, there's a, there's like a, you know, fake vagina. And then, I said, well, I said gender didn't even really matter. I've also, I'll, Never done anything with the eye, but I've always been, you know, bi curious. I got a fucking vibrator and a couple of dildos. And, uh, what, uh, then there's uh, some like novelty things like the handcuffs and blindfold. So are they real that. functional handcuffs that would restrain somebody? They've got the little releases on them, people could get out of them if they really try again. Okay, it's more it's desire for them. Yeah, yeah, I got them out of sex at the Christmas toy box at the sex store. Okay. Have you always been interested in, like, um, I guess, you know, like, s and &M games? No, not at all, no. Uh, neither bondage or s and &M. I just mainly got the handcuffs here about a year or so ago because there was a girl I liked who was kind of into handcuffs. And, you know, I was like, well, if, you know, I ever end up, you know, getting involved with her, something that you thought maybe you guys talked and you knew she'd like that and yeah was it internet deal no it was uh it was uh well, who was it that like was it was it the internet was it the girl i think it might have been the girl i work with uh, i when i 
my previous job before this one, I worked at a Carl's Jr. down there for nine years, and there was a person. Yeah. Oh. And there was a girl uh, there I worked with for several years, and we were pretty good friends. Uh, it's still, we're still in contact online, rarely. You know, I, I talked to her a few days ago, and that was the first time I talked to her in about a month. And I think it was her that, I, I had a crush on her for like two or three years, and I think it was her that liked them. But, Okay. What did you do with Carl's Jr. for nine years? Cashier. Uh, you know, they offered me management a long time ago, but I just didn't want it. Didn't want the responsibility for basically no extra money. <laughs> so I was, I was mainly a cashier, usually in the drive-thru. Why did you leave Carl's Jr.? Because it was low pay, and I'd been there for nine years, and been <laughs> sick of it. And I got, you know, my dad found me this better job. So better pay? Yeah. Now, going back to um, the plan, you, uh, yeah, so, you had the handcuffs and the duct tape. Yeah, so what I was going to do is I was going to, uh, you know, like I said, yank them in there, restrain them, and if, if it was a kid, I was going to just make them sit there and watch some porn her, and then I was going to have sex with them. And then... Well, you were trying to make it, turn them all with the porn and make it voluntary? I was... You know, kind of hoping that would happen, but I, you know, figured it probably wouldn't. So you think that you would have to do it by force? Yeah, most most likely. And then, you know, the uh, after the sex, it would turn kind of violent. I'd start to kind of torture them a little and stuff like that. Uh, How would you torture them? Uh, In your fantasies, what would you do? Sticking large objects in their anus, uh, causing them pain that way. I had some uh, long barbecue skewers I bought. I was going to poke through their cheeks. I've got a, uh, in that bag of porn, there's also a Barbie doll head I found on the ground a while back that I stuck some needles in. Kind of illustrates what was in my fantasy. It had like some needles in its cheeks and some nails in its eyes, but I wasn't intending on doing that because I. Uh, the the, the, the uh, torture was kind of a late addition because at first I wanted the body to be pretty much unharmed because uh, what I was going to do after that then was I was going to, uh, while they were still alive and gagged, I was going to uh, drape them over the bathtub and cut off their head and uh, then hang them there and let the blood all drain out, so good and drained out. And I was going to keep the body around for a couple of days. I was going to sub the head on my desk so it could like watch me mm-hmm. and you know keep the corpse in my bed sleeping with it having sex with it for a day or two and then i was going to start butchering them and cooking them so okay did you buy any pots or any special things for that just the barbecue ske- skewers and some meat tenderizer powder and uh Hacksaw to cut open the head to get to the brain because they wanted to eat the brain and the heart and some of the organs. Uh, it's, it's been my experience that a lot of people who like or think about those kind of things maybe experiment with animals. Have you ever experimented with animals? No, uh, I told the guy earlier, in fact, you know, this, like I said, this is just entirely against my nature. And if, you know, I told him I'm not really religious, but what beliefs I do have would be uh, pretty much best described as Buddhist, I, I hated, I, I didn't even like stepping on bugs. You know, I didn't believe in violence or in anything until this happened. Okay. So. Now, after after you chopped the head off and maybe cooked them, and so then, what, what would you, could you continue on from there? Uh, well, uh, then it went into, you know, disposing of the body. I was probably going to keep the skull. Uh, but then, you know, I was going to pretty much eat everything except for some of the organs and those I figured I could you know put in a trash bag and probably throw away without too much uh, chance of getting caught uh, and uh, so basically all that'd be left was bones and I was going to uh, try to you know break the bones up into little pieces so they wouldn't be as visible and you know dump them in a ditch somewhere okay. or if you know then, then well that, that was my original plan that's what I wanted to do but you know and did you ever write any of this down on yeah. your computer? Yeah. But you know they're going to go through your computer really good. Yeah, I know, yeah. I already deleted, like, as soon as, uh, I never had anything wrote down, but I already deleted, uh, 
lot of the porn and stuff off my computer. After this happened? Yeah, as soon as, like, the cops, you know, started sniffing around, like, uh... Asking. And so, um, all, all the porn's there. But I had a lot of, uh, in the last couple of months, I, I've been to a bunch, you know, there's a lot of websites out there where you can download, like, crime scene photos, like real dead bodies and stuff like that. And I had a fairly large collection of those. I deleted, like, all of those. And uh, I, I never had any child porn on there, but, and it might still be on there because I think I put it in a different directory than the rest of the porn. I had just a couple, like four or five pictures I downloaded from like a children's swimwear catalog of like 10 year old girls in swimsuits. But that's close to I ever had like any child pornography or anything. Do you, do you, I'm sorry, do you have, do you have anything on your computer? Um, like, you know, I had you sure that you destroyed that stuff? Or did you just go, well, you know, could it yeah, still be a burn on your hard drive? Yeah, they say none of that's permanent unless, they, well, they claim there's programs now that can make it permanent. But no, all I did was, uh, you know, drag it to the trash bin and hit, you know, empty trash bin. So it can most likely be recovered probably. Okay, you didn't go, with, I, I forgot what it's called. It starts with an end, but there's a, there's a certain program that yeah, if you use that, you can, you can really wipe stuff out. Yeah, I don't you know, yeah, there's, there's programs like that all over. I see advertised, but now I don't have any of those. And okay, they're going, they're going to think about this. They're really going to pull this stuff up. When did you think you first started downloading this kind of stuff? Because they're going to know for a fact. Yeah, well, the cannibalism thing started uh, probably a year or so ago. Uh, might have been while I was on the medication the first time, but I'm not sure. I don't think so, but it might have been. Now, Kevin, for the record, you're currently taking your medication. Is that correct? Yeah. Did you take it today? Yeah. And you say it works for you. It certainly it doesn't really help with the anxiety. I'm still, well, I'm still shy, and I still can't really talk to people. But I don't have, like, the panic attacks, and I don't get depressed about, you know, not not I mean, your social life. Well, yeah. are you aware of your actions and fully un in, in understanding what you're doing? As far as I knew, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, so you can I don't think it might have, like, you know, maybe, like, lowered my inhibitions a little or something like that, you know. Maybe so. You might have. It recognizes what you're doing as being against the law. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, is there any questions that you have about that? No. You know, I know what I did was wrong, and you know, I know that I deserve to be punished for it. So the, the deal with cannibals may have been a, a solid okay. thing, but yeah, but, I mean it was it wasn't something I was. I mean, you know, I was kind of interested in you, know, kind of curious as to what it would taste like, and uh, you know, it kind of aroused me, and I you know kind of masturbated to some of the pictures because I mean, there's this website out there, I don't even remember what it is now, where you can download lots of you know like fake computer graphic images of like women on spits and. Stuff like that, and you know, cooking yeah. over a fire or whatever. And you found it sexually arousing. Yeah, I'm okay. very. Uh, but it was the thought of killing someone, though, at the same time. It was in my mind, it was like, well, I'd only do it, you know, if the woman, you know, wanted to die and wanted to, me to eat her. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't, you know, go out and kill someone, you know, murder's wrong. I wouldn't ever murder someone. That's, you know, the way I thought at the time. But um, I've been surfing internet porns for probably 12, 13 years, and, you know, there's a lot of weird stuff on the internet, and so as the years went by, you know, I just kind of got uh, kind of desensitized to normal porn, and just had to keep going after, like, harder and harder core stuff until it, until it finally yeah, got to kind of this cannibalism point. And then here recently after that, I started, you know, like kind of seriously thinking about it and, uh, you know, develop an interest in these pictures of real death and cannibalism. And have you ever read gore and gruesome things? And have you ever read uh, psychology books or internet sites and just out of curiosity reading about people with like interests or to say, hey, you know, somebody like me who of like wise people who would get sexual gratifications out of, you know, out of possible cannibalism or, or viewing women on spits or things well, like that. Well, that, that site, yeah, that I downloaded, like, all the fake pictures from, it was it was a message board, mostly, and picture, uh, you know, it was mostly text, but people would, uh, it's like, here, you know, here's this picture I made with my computer. And uh, it was, you know, it, so it was all, like, people with the same interests. And, you know, pretty much, probably 95% of them 
uh, from what they said on there anyway, were in the same mindset as me. You know, I would never do this, but it's fun to fantasize about. It's a, it's a fun yeah. fantasy. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's an interesting fantasy that gets me off, but I would never kill anyone. And given the chance, I would probably not ever actually eat someone. You know, was most of their opinions. Uh, so you, yes. would, you would masturbate if you like to this fantasy of a cannibal, a cannibal invasion, like seeing a woman on a spit or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Okay. When now? What today? When did it first enter your mind that yes, I'm going to do this today? Well, not today, but I'm sorry. When did it Wednesday? Well, it Wednesday. Yeah, I'm sorry. What day was that for the record? Wednesday. You know what day in the April or uh, what are we April? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's the fourteenth, so and then what the eleventh? Yeah, and Friday the fourteenth, Thursday the Thursday the thirteenth, yeah, yeah. Wednesday the twelfth. Yeah. I'm bad with dates. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't understand. Wednesday the twelfth. Yeah. You know for sure it was a Wednesday. Yeah, it okay. was definitely Wednesday because I'm off on Wednesday and I was off work that day. Okay. Go oh, ahead. Yeah, did, did, did you plan it for your day off? It was, well, I, I'd been planning it. Like I said, I'd been planning it for months behind some days and, you know, trying to get the exact plan down of what I do and how I dispose of it afterwards. And, and the exact date. And, well, like I said, I kind of wanted her, but it didn't really matter. I mean, it's... That's to tell the truth. That's the main reason I was hanging out in front of my apartment is to watch all the kids and watch all the people come and go. And it was, I you know, I had pretty much planned all along to probably get a kid, just mainly because they'd be easier to grab and easier to get rid of afterwards, smaller and you know, put up less of a fight. But there was a few you know girls of my age. I'd be like, you know, well, she's really attractive. I wouldn't mind you know killing and eating her and having sex with her and all that. But uh, did you find her attractive? Not really. No, she was kind of. Homely, you know, but uh, that was part of me that yeah, kind of found her attractive, but at the same time, not really. What, I don't, what, is, what did you mean by homely? Well, she, I don't know. She just had like she was almost bald. She had like really thin hair, really thin hair. And, what color was it? Uh, just a light red, that's almost blondish red. Uh, and you know, she was a little chubby, and you know, just kind of wasn't my type, basically. Uh, and you said again, you thought, how old was she? I, I would have sworn she was at least 12, maybe 13. So, so you were pretty confident you knew she was a kid. I mean, there wasn't any question. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of the kids that I, uh, when I when I was first thinking about it, you know, I was like looking at, you know, like five-year-old boy running around out there playing all day. So, I mean, the age and the gender didn't really matter to me. Now, when did you come up with Wednesday would be the day? Basically, the incident had happened. I mean, like, so I said, there had been, there was plenty of times before that I could have grabbed her if I wanted, or grabbed some other kid, but especially her, because, uh, like I say, she got to where she talked to me, and she'd actually been in my apartment a couple of times before that. Uh, she, well, she'd come down, because, like, one time I was standing out there with my pet rat, holding it, and had it on my shoulder, and, you know, she thought it was cute, and she wanted to pet it. And then, like, later that evening, I was, still had my front door open, but I was, like, sitting on the couch watching TV, and she just kind of wandered into my apartment and you know, said, can I pet your rat? So, uh, you know, she seemed like a very trusting kid. Do you know how long ago that was? To put it in perspective for me. A week? week, maybe two. Probably about a week. Uh, but yeah, she was a very trusting kid. If it hadn't been me, it could have ended up being someone else. Because, like I said, she just kind of wandered into my apartment. But I didn't, you know, force her in there or even ask her in. And so she came in for a few minutes and, you know, looked at my rat and fed it up and pallet. And then uh, Tuesday night, the night before this happened, she came down. Uh, I guess her, I guess they didn't have a phone upstairs because I'd see her occasionally go to there. There's like a payphone on the other side of the compound. And she'd go down there and use that. And she was going down there to, uh, her father sent down there, sent her down there to uh, call Bozio's and order some pizza for her. And, but I was standing there in my doorway and she's just like, well, you know, can I use your phone? And so I might have used my phone. She stayed outside, though. She's like, oh, I don't want to get in trouble for coming into your apartment. So she did yeah, step in. Yeah, oh, she, okay. st she stepped in for a minute. But then, like, once I gave her to the phone, she was like, well, I better get outside. And so, you know, I had plenty of chances to get her. Uh, but, you know, like I said, uh, every time I'd, I'd be thinking, you know, oh, I'm going to do this. I want to get her. Definitely her. But then I'd see her. And, you know, be oh, I'm going to get her this time. And then be like, then I'd see her, though, and, like, no, I can't hurt her. Yeah. 
all that. I mean, that happened pretty much every kid that I you know kind of wimp out at the last minute, uh, but especially her because I kind of liked her. Uh, but then you have this Wednesday she came in. Now she came home from school. Let me ask you this real quick. Going back to Tuesday night, if she came into your house and used the phone yeah. during the overnight hours when you were home and um, into the next day, did did you engage in any fantasy on the internet? I mean, did that kind of turn you on at the thought of, yeah, I could have almost done it. But I, and did you fantasize about it early at night, or did you go to websites the night and then in the morning until the next day? No, I hadn't been to any of the websites really recently because I just downloaded a bunch of pictures of my hard drive and I looked at it. So I hadn't really been to any of the websites. And were well, you, most of them had probably been a week or more. So. Were you looking at them on your hard drive? Yeah, I had them all stored on my computer. All Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, were you looking at them on your hard drive? Probably not, because you know, another thing that kept it from happening so long is, you know, I'd be standing there in the doorway, fantasizing about it, you know, preparing to grab a kid, and I'd get so turned on I'd end up masturbating, and, you know, like as soon as I had an orgasm, it's I, I, the bird. Yeah, I'd just be hit with disgust and be like, my God, what am I thinking about? You know, it's, you can't do that, it's horrible. And uh, so that's usually what would happen. Uh, let me ask you, when you masturbate, how would you clean it up? What would you do? Would you masturbate in a towel or would you masturbate into a jug? Uh, or? No, usually uh, usually Kleenex or one of the floor and then I'd clean it up with a wet rag. You just flush it down the toilet? Or? Uh, well, I usually use a wet rag and then I just you know, rinse the rag out and then okay. you know, wash it when I did in the laundry. Okay. So, did, did you masturbate about it Tuesday night? Probably. Okay. After she left? I'm, yeah, I'm sure I probably did. Uh, and then how well, no, Tuesday night, because no, I think when she came down to use my phone, I had already, okay. I think, masturbated probably for the day. And, uh, I wasn't even really, you know, planning it anymore at the time. I was just kind of standing there for real, just kind of hanging out, getting some air. And, you know, she's like, can I use your phone? Uh, what did you do Tuesday night before you went to sleep? I don't remember. Uh, probably was playing the game I usually play on the line. How late did you stay up? You think playing? I'm usually, I usually, I'm usually in bed by eight or eight thirty. Cause you get up so early. Yeah, cause I get up at three. That's what I'm most of the game. I was, I was uh, you just, uh, you like play it right there on the computer. You don't download anything. You just go to the website, and it's you know fully contained in the website. It's called Kingdom of Loathing. Yeah. Okay. It was a. Uh, I mean, it had nothing to do with this. I hate for it to even. It's probably going to end up being bad for this. It was just. A, it was just a silly little harmless game. You know, it's, yeah, it was fun. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it was what I spent the majority of the time doing. I mean, if I wasn't at work, uh, well, until I started hanging out, you know, doing all this. If I wasn't at work, I was probably on there playing that game. Okay. Uh, it it's a good hobby. Yeah, it was my main hobby. Uh, now, how, how much sleep did you get Tuesday I, night, Wednesday, till Wednesday morning? If you went to bed at 8 on Tuesday. Oh, yeah, I was off Wednesday, so I'm starting to say I might have stayed up later, but no, I'm pretty sure I went to bed about 8 Tuesday night, and since I was off, I slept until I think 7 o'clock Wednesday morning. I go from there. What happened there? Uh, well, from seven to uh, about eleven o'clock, I played that game, and uh, then you know I took my shower and brushed my teeth and shaved and everything, get ready to uh, over to my parents' house to uh, drop some laundry off. Uh, about uh, eleven forty-five noon, something like that, because uh, uh, my mom still does all my laundry. Because you know I was you know I was going to do it up there, and they've got a lot of mat. But she's like, oh, you just live two blocks away, I'll do it for you. So I always, I took my laundry there and dropped it off for her to do it while I went shopping. And then, so from about noon to probably 2, 2.30, something like that, I was uh, driving. Uh, actually, I didn't leave town like I told you earlier. I was in, I don't know why I said that. Uh, I was, um, I just went here in town to United and Super Thrift. Just did, did my normal grocery shopping is all it was. And United is a supermarket. Uh, up there next to the Walmart on Green. Green Did you Avenue. buy anything? Yeah. Uh, actually, I can't even I barely remember what I did that day. Uh, 
not ending good. You know, and I went to a super thrift and dollar store, the new dollar store they just built, you know, and I got got a few things at each place, you know, just like I said, just normal food, like no grocery stuff, some cereal, some milk, some bread. Uh, and then, you know, I went back after that, I went back to my parents' place about a, you know, about what, what time was that? I'm so tired right now, I'm having trouble remembering what I did, uh, getting the time straight anyway. Uh, actually, yeah, it was about three o'clock. I went over to my parents' place. It was a, yeah, I got back home from shopping about 2 o'clock. Then I uh, uh, got online and uh, talked to that girl in California, Melissa, for about 45 minutes or so until, you know, about 2.45, 2.50. I went back to my parents' place to uh, pick up my laundry, and also they had said to, you know, come back when my sister got out from school. She wanted me to help her with something on her homework or something like that. Uh, and so I went over there. I was there from about, uh, you know, 10 to 3 to about 3.30. And uh, uh, when I got back uh, home about 3.30, I noticed that uh, the girl's bike was gone. She'd gone somewhere on her bike, which kind of struck me as odd because most days it'd be... Uh, closer to 3.45, 4 o'clock before she'd even show up coming home from school. Uh, she didn't, she walked from school, she walked home from school. I don't know why she didn't ride her bike, but so I knew that meant she had come home and because uh, of what I really wanted to do, I you know, I kind of planned it for that day, but I mean I've been planning it for like every day for like a month pretty much. Uh, I planned, you know, to get her as she, you know, walked in from school before she had a chance to even go upstairs and you know, someone who looked like she never came home from school is what I wanted. But I was surprised and, you know, kind of annoyed to learn that she'd already been upstairs and, you know, come home and been upstairs and gone again. So I hung around waiting for her and about 10, 15 minutes after that, probably about 3.45 or so, something like that, she, you know, came back home, just stuck her. She didn't chain her bike up. She just propped it up against the stairwell there. And went upstairs and came back down about four o'clock uh, in a new outfit. She had changed clothes. Yeah. Uh, um, um, the first time she came home, before she went and changed clothes, you know, she stopped. She saw me standing there. And, you know, she was just like, oh, this is horrible. I had to. And I came home from school and realized I forgot my house keys at home and had to go back and get them. And it's so hot today and I have to go up a big hill. And you know, she was just complaining about how hot she was. And, she couldn't believe how hot it was around here. She said it, she didn't think it ever got that hot in Dibble where she used to live. And uh, then she went upstairs and came back down in a uh, new outfit and with a cup, kind of, uh, a mug of ice milk, which the mug's also in the bag with the uh, bicycle parts. And uh, she came down again, started talking about, you know. Her bike was still unlocked right there. Yeah, it was still sitting there unlocked, which was good because that had been my plan all along was to take the bike too. So, I looked, or, you know, if I couldn't get her on her way home from school to take the bike, so it would look like she, you know, was out on her bike and got kidnapped or run off or something like that. Uh, anyway, she came downstairs and was still, you know, she's like, oh, there's nothing, when it's this hot, nothing good, like a good, you know, ice glass of ice milk. And, uh, and she, you know, kind of chatted for a minute and then asked to come inside and see my rat again. And she just sat there on the floor uh, looking at my rat. And uh, about the only TV I ever watch is cartoons, Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon. And SpongeBob was on. And so she was kind of sitting there watching that. And we were talking about the show a little. And she was in my apartment probably a good 15 minutes. And uh, after she'd been in there a few minutes, you know, when she first came in, I was like, oh, that was my chance. But, you know, then I had to say, no, I can't do it. And I just kind of struggled with myself the whole time she was in there. And uh, it was a struggle between right and wrong. Yeah, uh, well, or kind of, yeah, both that and, you know, not wanting to get caught. But, but yeah, it was partly because, you know, uh, you know, I can't do this. I don't want to do it. But then, you know, yeah, I want to do this. And there's a little bit of fear like, hey, if I do this, I might get caught. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, that was a large part of it, too, but, um, but anyway, then I even had, uh, I had all the stuff, I had all the stuff sitting there handy, uh, on that, uh, you know, entertainment center right by my door, I'd had, uh, you know, like for the last month, I'd had, uh, 
piece of duct tape stuff there. So, you know, I can just grab it and slap the tape over there now. And also the handcuffs sitting there on the shelf. So, you know, I can yank them in and restrain them, hopefully, before they have the time to yell or anything. And uh, uh, also, it had been just uh, two or three nights before that I, you know, suddenly thought of the, uh, and it was mainly something I had reserved for if I did grab an adult, something to subdue him. I tried to find something heavy I could hopefully hit him on the head and knock him out with. And the best thing I had was a uh, slightly heavy wooden cutting board in the kitchen. So I had that sitting on the entertainment center at that time, too. And after she'd been in there a few minutes, I kind of... So it'd be ready so you'd have an accent right there at you? Yeah, so just kind of like yank him in and whack him over the head. Okay. But I hadn't planned on doing that if it was a kid, because... If it was a kid, like I said, I wanted to keep him conscious and make him watch porn. Uh, but uh, I even also kind of, you know, also was, as they were watching the porn, you know, depending on how old they were, you know, like telling them what was going on. You know, like, well, this is sex. You know, the guy does this and the woman does this. And, you know, this is called an orgasm. You know, kind of like teaching them. But, um, and hopefully they want to try it for themselves. Something like that. Uh, but anyway, then, uh, you know, so I kind of, once she got in there, I kind of was like, you know, you know, it was, it was more of the, the uh, you know, kind of regrets and fears, and I was like, you know, I better just knock her out, you know, knock her out, and, you know, then restrain her while she's unconscious, you know, get her clothes off and everything while she's unconscious, and I'm not even going to bother with the porn, I'm just going to, you know, knock her out and rape her. Uh, so uh, after she'd been in there a few minutes, I kind of, you know, made my way around behind her and was just kind of standing behind her, watching, you know, talking to her as we were watching the show and kind of, you know, fighting with myself. I, I grabbed the, I, you know, reached out there once and grabbed the uh, cutting board and, you know, you know, I put it down on the couch. I couldn't do it. And so for like five minutes, I just stood there, you know, going back and forth, picking it up, putting it back down and saying, you know, and finally, I was just, you know, look, either do it or tell her to get the hell out of the apartment, you know. Uh, and finally, I did it. And, you know, as soon as I hit her. What did she say when you hit her? That's something that's, you know, haunted me forever since it happened. Uh, she started yelling, I'm sorry. Which, you know, I'm just like, you know, what is she sorry for? She didn't do anything wrong. It's me, you know, I'm the one that should be sorry. She was just, you know, like, you know, wrapped around the head to make a loud noise. If there was anyone home, you know, I mean, apparently no one had been home in the apartment next to me or above me or I would have been caught for sure because it did knock her out. She started screaming. Kevin, how did you hold the board? I'm not clear to me how you did her. I had to, you know, it was like a square, you know, like a little hole cut out, like a handle. Uh -huh. And I just held her by the handle and, like, whacked. With one hand, like a... Yeah, you know, just, like, whacked her upside the side of the head. Where did you hit her on the head? Can you put... Can you put it on my head where you hit I was standing behind her, so yeah, it was about, probably, about, probably about like that. Something okay. like that. Okay, right there. It's here. Yeah, maybe down farther on the side. It was probably kind of the side top. Because I think, I think I did it with this hand. But, you know, it was probably this hand because I'm right-handed, and that was my stronger hand, so yeah, it was probably this. Right you were behind her. Yeah, I was behind her just whack. And she was where? Sitting in the floor, like in front of the TV okay. and the rat cage. Okay. Just right up against the rat cage. Almost. I had to, you know, I had to kind of wait for her to get in a position. I didn't want her to like fall over on the rat cage. But, uh, so I whacked her with that, and she, you know, she's like, "Ow!" Oh, and started crying, and she's like, "Oh God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my God, I'm sorry," and just saying, "I'm sorry" over and over, mostly. And I so I whacked her again, and. She jumped up, and, you know, I, I couldn't believe it didn't knock her out. I hit her. You know, it's, it's all kind of a blur once it started happening, but I hit her, I think, three times, maybe four. But with all, each time with the same cutting board? Yeah. And as hard as you could? Yeah, I mean, every time I got hard, it was just like, you know. She's not going down. Yeah, it's like, why isn't she unconscious yet? Because you think when you hit somebody, hit her, because you see on TV. Yeah. She yeah. Did she exist? Yeah, she, uh, like I said, she jumped, she was yelling, oh, God, I'm sorry, and, you know, uh, you know, let me go, I won't tell, and, you know, I mean, after I hit her a couple times, I finally just had to, you know, jump up and grab her, and she was, I couldn't believe how strong she was, I barely held her down, uh, I finally 
I like to never dog her down to the ground. I mean, I had, well, you know, how I, I didn't want to choke her because, like I said, I wanted the body to be pretty much perfect. Uh, so I didn't want to leave the you know marks around her neck or anything. So I just you know crying my hand over. Were you behind her, or were you looking yeah. you on the chair on the ground? No, I was. Uh, like I said uh, she got up and was trying to run around, and I you know grabbed her from behind, was kind of hugging her with her mouth over her, her uh, hand over her mouth and nose. And eventually, you know, after she started getting weaker and stuff, and I mean we flopped around. I've got pretty bad carpet burns on my knees from it. I said she put up a. Is that is is and just for the for me to understand? I see this is your right leg. You know that it's on both of them, but this one's the worst. So. So you were wearing shorts at the time? Yeah. I and mean, you're telling me this is from the incident with... Yeah. Okay. Because you were on... Yeah, from struggling with her on the ground. Yeah, struggling with her on the ground. Because then, you know, once I, uh, you know, I finally got her down to the ground, finally got her, you know, I mean, we struggled. It It took me probably 15, 20 minutes to kill her. Uh, to get her completely dead. Because then even after, one way, I, you know, struggled with her for a minute, finally got her down to the ground on her stomach. And so I was... Kind of sitting on her back, you know, with my mouth over. Or, no, she was on her back, you know, and I was sitting on her, clamping my back. My so hand you were looking at her face and you were covering her mouth. Yes, yeah, kind of sitting on her, not really putting my full weight on her, you know, kind of like on my knees with a little bit of my weight on her stomach to hold her down. And, uh. Did you feel aroused at that point? Very, yeah. By the time I, by the time uh, I got done killing her, uh, you know, like, Underwear was soaked, you know, when you get aroused, it'll start, you know, kind of leaking a little. Yeah, pre ejaculation. Yeah, it was, uh, I was, my underwear was pretty much soaked by the time she, uh, well, even before she was completely dead. But, so, are uh, you telling me you were sexually gratified during this struggle? Pretty much, yeah. Did you have an orgasm? I, was it just I, I didn't have an orgasm, but I was, you know, very, very aroused. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, just standing there behind her debating on killing her or not, you know, I've started to get an erection. Uh, but anyway, yeah, then she still, I mean, when she was down on the floor, she kept me all the slipping out of my grip, and she ended up, she ended up, yeah, on her stomach at one point. Yeah, she ended up on her stomach, because I remember uh, there's a toolbox sitting there by the edge of the uh, uh, love seat, and, you know, that was kind of in, like, her last moment, she just started, started kind of reaching around, grabbing things, and she, like, opened that toolbox, and then she pretty much went limp, and... I laid there on her for a good, you know, couple of minutes more to make sure she was dead. She'd still, every now and then, uh, cause, you know, cramping through your, she, she could still get a kind of a little bit of air sometimes through her fingers. If my grip slipped a little bit, so I laid there for a while and finally was pretty sure she was dead. Flopped her over, and then about thirty seconds later, she took a breath. Hmm. So I had to jump on her and do it again. It took probably several more, you know. It's, Probably wasn't as long as it seemed like, but it seemed like it took her another five minutes to get her limp then. And then finally, when she was, I was pretty sure she was dead again, I uh, jumped up and grabbed the duct tape and put it over her mouth and nose because I was getting tired. My arms were getting sore from clamping down on her for so, so you long. Could, I was you were probably seal her lips. That yeah. way you wouldn't have to hold her anymore. Yeah. You could ensure she was gone. Yeah, I could make sure she didn't start breathing again this time. Okay. And uh, then. You know, once I got her taped up, I drug her into the bedroom so I could open the front door and wheel her bike in. Mm -hmm. uh, Where did you put her when you put her in the bedroom? Just uh, there in the floor, like between the computer desk and the bed. I just like wheeled her kind of right through the door, far enough that I could close the door so I could open the front door without anyone seeing Do you remember any of your neighbors seeing you talk to her that day right before she went to the apartment? Unless they were looking at the peephole or anything, I don't think any of the neighbors had ever seen her talk to me at all. Okay. But, and, you know, that was one of the things I was always so nervous about is, you know, like, with the apartment right across from me, they had a door with the peephole, and I'm, you know, like, what if they're looking out the peephole as I grabbed the kid? You know, something like that. So, anyway, you took her back in there, then you went outside, and did you get the bike? Yeah, I got the bike, wheeled it in. First, I stuck it in the uh, big walk-in closet just to get out of the way. You know, my head's so low to the ground, I wouldn't have went out of bed until I removed the pedals and everything. You know, that, that was the main, what, what I thought, you know, all along was like, the main flaw in my plan, because it's a, because with my plan to eat her and everything, it seemed like the bike was going to be a lot harder to dispose of than the bike. 
So you can give us a call about how to get rid of this fly. Yeah. Uh, and then, I never, like I said, I never actually had sex with her. But after I got her back in, you know, she was laying there in the bedroom, and I stripped her clothes off of her. Where'd you put the clothes? After you took them off? At that time, I just threw them in the floor, and they were all wet and smelly because she'd wet herself when I was choking her. Uh, but I took her clothes off and licked her nipples a little and, you know, kind of smelled her vagina. And I kind of got the tip of my penis in her, but that was it because I, I, mean, I was going to try to have sex with her right there. But when you say in her, can you describe whether that, what body part that would be? Uh, her vagina. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even want to say I just kind of, well, I was going to, but the way she was like laying right on the floor, I couldn't really get to her very good. So I just, just kind of tip of my penis kind of rubbed her vagina a little bit. Uh, you know, it might have, as far as like DNA goes, you know, there might be some of that uh, pre-ejaculate on her. Really? Did you take all your clothes off? Yeah. And, like, as soon as I got the bike in, I stripped myself down, then stripped her down, and, you know, was going to have sex with her and found out I couldn't, so I was going to move her uh, I was going to move her into the living room onto the uh, couch where I had a, I had like a big beach towel. It's in the uh, uh, box with her, a big red beach towel that I had bought, you know, way down on the couch so I didn't get anything on the couch. Were you thinking at that time, were you thinking about hair, blood, you know, uh, yeah, you wanted to keep that from off your couch? Blood and, yeah, sex fluids and stuff like that. You don't want somebody coming in later and analyzing the couch? Yeah, but, pretty much, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> And so I was going to drag her in there to the living room, but she, you know, big for her age, uh, paper said she's like 110 pounds, and I was having a hard time, you know, flopping her over and rolling her around and dragging her around. Uh, so I decided just at that point, uh, because, you know, that was the reason I'd always wanted to, uh, my plan had always been to behead them while they were alive, was, you know, so the blood would coagulate and I could get all the blood out, uh, like you would when you go to your an animal. Uh, and, you know, that way, so both of me wouldn't be bloody. And so when I put her in my bed, hopefully she wouldn't leak any blood out of the bed and stuff. And so I was like, well, it's a lot closer, and I don't want, to, you know, she's already been dead maybe 15, 10, 15 minutes, and so I don't want the blood to get all coagulated, so I'm just going to go ahead and drag her into the tub and behead her and then have sex with her body. And I got her in there, drank her over the side of the tub, which, you know, I thought I was stronger than that, but I could barely get her up on that tub. Uh, and got a big knife. It's in a, it wasn't a butcher knife. It's a, one of the knives in my collections. Well, it's the only knife in my collection, really. It's this big, ornate, like, dagger. And it always seemed like it was pretty sharp, so that's what I was going to use. And I got her in there and propped her over the tub. And, you know, over the, she was out of the tub, with, you know, just like her head, you know, over the edge, hanging into the tub. And I, you know, kind of got there. I put a rubber band in her hair so it would be out of the way and, because I didn't even want to, uh, like I said, I wanted the body perfect and clean. I didn't want to get blood all in her hair, so I'd have to wash it and everything. And uh, so I started sawing at her neck. And I, said, I couldn't believe the amount of blood that came out of the girl that small. And it was already all clotted and everything. Was it going down the drain of your t- uh, tub? I had a bowl, a big you know, white bowl. It's in the kitchen on top of the microwave. I was going to collect try to collect, uh, you know, a lot of the blood in that, probably taste of it. And, uh, but then when it started coming out, you know, it was, you know, pretty much hard to get to go where I wanted it. And like I said, it was already all dark and clotted and gross looking anyway. And so, yeah, most of it was just going down the tub. I had the water running and it still almost clogged the drain. It was so clotted already. And, uh, Did you ever pour any Drano down the toilet? I didn't have any Drano. I was going to go out and buy some, but, uh, all I had was I poured like some other cleansers, some toilet bowl cleanser and stuff down there to help hopefully break it up a little bit. Cause I was afraid it'd like back the pipes up or something, back up into other people's apartment or something. But, you know, they'd know something was going on when they, you know, then they'd find her missing and you know that someone in the apartment complex killed her. Okay. Uh, so you you had trouble sawing her head off. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah, I was trying to remember where I was. Yeah, I went. You know, God, I guess to her spine, and I just saw it and saw it and saw it and could not get it at last. And I was pretty much exhausted by it. And like I said, you know, as soon as I hit her, you know, I wished I hadn't started this. But, you know, as soon as I hit her the first time, I was like, well, now it's too late. I can't stop now. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, that was the only reason I even went through with any of it. And then, like I said, you know, I was disgusted at first, but then once I was climbing down on top of her, holding her down, choking her, I got aroused again. Uh, but so at this point, yeah, I was just disgusted. I was like, God, this mess. Because I couldn't even keep the blood in the tub. It was running down her and right down inside the tub into the floor. And it was like, you know, at this point, I just clean up this mess and get the body out of here. I'm not even going to have sex with her. Okay. And I was already pretty upset. You know, I can't believe I did this. Wish I hadn't did it. You know, wish I could take it back. Right. And uh, so at that point, did you start thinking of coming up with a plan that I won't get caught? Yeah, I had to change all my plans since I was going to be a body. And <laughs> Were you thinking about how I'm going to dispose of the body and how I'm going to dispose of the bicycle? Yeah, that was, I had bought that uh, big Rubbermaid container she's in. I had bought that specifically for this, too, but not to describe that for us. Since we don't have a picture of it here. I, it was just a big, like, I think it was like a 50-liter big gray, you know, Rubbermaid container, like storage container with a, you know, lid on it. Where did you buy it? It's been weeks, uh, Probably Walmart. three or four weeks, yeah, from the Walmart Supercenter in Norman. Did you, uh, and you and bought it for the purpose of your plan? I bought it for the purpose of, because like I said I wanted to keep the body around for a couple of days, but I wanted to still be able to eat it when I was done, so I didn't want it to go back. I was going to, I wanted to get an ice chest, but they didn't really have any ice chests big enough to put a kid in that weren't, like, really expensive. So I just was like, well, I'll get in a, you know, big container like this. It seals very, fairly well. And just keep a bunch of bags of ice in there. Did you keep your receipts from when you bought that stuff? No. Did you pay cash? I pay cash most of the time. Sometimes I use a credit card. That that particular time I might have used a credit card, but I don't know. Okay. And I don't usually keep my receipts. Occasionally I'll throw them down on the table when I get home, and I don't clean very often, so some of them might still be there, but... I can't say whether or not that one is. Mm -hmm. So, at this point, you decide you're going to put her in the tub? That container, yeah, I was yeah. Like, yeah. I call it the tub, I'm yeah, sorry. Uh, the plan, you know, the plan all along for disposing of the bones was to use that uh, duffel bag thing, but, you know, I was hoping I'd still get the body in there, but, you know, I got her and realized, well, no, she's way too big for this. And I like to never even got her in that tub, because, because, uh, well, you know, was, it, was the duffel bag was involved for this plan too? No, I'd had the duffel bag for several years. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Rob. But, but anyway, and, and you know, when I said from about four to, I was probably more like five to six thirty. I was in the morning talking to that girl in California while the, uh, you know, half beheaded corpse was sitting there in the, you know, sitting up propped against the tub draining because. Was your mind in your mind that I need to set up an alibi for where I was? Because you, you seem to say, when we were talking to you, you're like, hey, yeah, she can vouch for me. I'm the no, I, I, no, I came up with that after. I mean, I was just genuinely. I decided that uh, so I went to try to get rid of the body, but then I was still bleeding too much. And the uh, stomach contents were pouring out of the neck. And uh, so I was like, well, I'm going to let it sit here for a few hours and coagulate some more. So maybe I can move it without it bleeding everywhere so much. So I just kind of went about my business with this. I closed the door because, you know, the bathroom, because like I said, I was sick, you know, sick to my stomach that I'm doing this. I didn't even want to, you know, see the corpse. And uh, I just kind of closed it up in the bathroom with some uh, incense burning to cover up the vomit smell from going up the, uh, uh, you know, air vent because, you know, I, 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 I the vomit where she was coming out. Yeah, because some of the contents were leaking out of Nick when I tried to move her. Because, uh, you know, I can often smell things coming from other people's apartments when they're cooking something strong. And I didn't want people to smell the blood and vomit, so I put some uh, strong incense burning in there and closed all the doors. And, uh, yeah, I just sat there at the computer for a couple of hours, you know, talking to her. I wasn't talking much because, you know, I was feeling really sick and, you know, really bad. But, I mean, I was literally physically sick, mainly from, I mean, partially from what I did and partially I was, you know, wore out and, sweating and hot from the exertion and I don't do well in warm temperatures it's just sitting there in that that was part of what was making me sick sitting back there in that office because it was even in here is too hot for me it feels pretty good in here but 
I grew up in a house. My parents kept it like 70 degrees pretty much all the time in the house. Anything over 70 degrees, I started to get hot. Uh, but so I was, you know, just sick to my stomach about the vomit, and so. But I was sitting there at the computer talking to her until. Well, then about that same time, you know, I, I was also I was talking to her, but I was also occasionally stepping outside, you know, helping them look for the girl, stuff like that, kind of setting it up an alibi there. And, when you, all, I was all concerned about her missing. When did you first notice they were looking for her? Pretty much right after I killed her, I looked out and I noticed the uh, dad got home a little early, it seemed like. He was home before five, I think. And I was probably about five or so, I noticed him out there. Uh, and started to walk around and get in his truck and drive around. And then, you know, I went out there one of the times specifically so he could ask me, have you seen her? And I could say no. And so he did, and I was like, uh, well, I mean, I told her, told him, you know, the story, the, whole, the last time I saw her, I saw her coming home from school, she went upstairs, came back down, got on her bike, rode off, that's the last time I saw her. Uh, and then, you know, like I said, I was stepping out there occasionally, acting, you know, uh, like I was keeping a watch for her in case she came back Well, dad was gone, and talking to the manager and all that and stuff, and, you know, oh, I hope they find her soon, it's horrible. You know, just kind of setting up and making myself look concerned, but not too concerned, because then that would make me look suspicious too. So, uh, and then finally, yeah, about eight, eight o'clock or so, I, you know, I told him, like, well, I, you know, I'd like to stay out here and help, but I've got to get back to the bed because I gotta, you know, work early in the morning. And then, you know, I went inside and finally finished. Uh, cleaning up the body and it's still white everywhere and I had to wash the tub out and wash the floor, scrub the floor. When you get the body in the tub, did you have to cut limbs off? Or? You know, she's not cut up at all except for the neck. So you just basically packed her body? Yeah, and by that time, that was the reason I had such a hard time getting her into that is because by that time she was already stiff and she had been in like a kneeling position on the tub so her legs were like all bent up like this. And you know, I couldn't get her knees to go down far enough to get the lid on. That was the main reason it was taped on at first because it wouldn't go down far enough to snap on. So I snapped it on and taped it down so it stays to have it snapped on. And then yesterday I went in there and you know, taped it more to seal it and, you know, in case it started smelling. It smells wouldn't get out. So, uh, the clothes know, that you're wearing your all is, did you put those in the box with it? No. Uh, I still wore them the next day even though. Cause so I didn't get much more. I didn't, didn't. Well, every time I get I mean, I, I wore them when I was choking her. But then, you know, when I was cleaning up the messes and cut her head off and everything, I took my clothes back off. So you were... Except for a okay. pair of underwear, a pair of gray underwear, which I think I stuck back in my underwear drawer. I didn't get anything on them either. So it was just, just in, in the tub, it was just her body and the clothes she was wearing? Uh, her body, you know... The tub and the, the blue, blue, blue... Yeah, the blue... blue. blue yeah. I call it tub. I'm yeah, but... Uh, it would be different from the yeah, tub, uh, but yeah. you were talking about the... Oh, yeah, well, well, like I, said, I tried to remember her, but she was still making a huge mess. So I got a tarp I had also bought for this purpose. But oh, I was that. About the same time I bought the tub, like the container. I bought it at the local Walmart, I think, though. Got it. But, um, what was I saying? Uh, so that tarp's in there, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's in there. So I went to move her, and she was bleeding everywhere, so I... I mean, I bought the tarp for the purpose of not getting blood because uh, I was going to have have sex with him on the couch, but when I went to torture him and stuff, I was probably going to put him on the floor on the tarp because there'd probably be some blood. And so I bought it for that. But then when I went to move her, I was like, you know, I can't even move her. She's so heavy. Uh, so I'm going to try to flop her over onto this tarp and maybe I can slide the tarp around a little better and wrap her up in that. So I kind of laid her on the tarp and folded it over a little and then got in some trash bags as good as I could. Okay. And when I opened it up, I saw the blue shirt. Did you just like I put her clothes folded on top of all this stuff? Afterwards, yeah. I put her, I put that, that red towel's on the bottom of the tub to soak up any blood or anything. Because uh, at first I figured I'd just dump the body somewhere, wash the tub out and bring it back. Uh, Then at the end, I was like, no, I don't even want to open the tub and look at this body again. I'm just going to drag the tub out to a field and set it on fire. Yeah. 
that would have been part of the plan all along. If somehow I wasn't able to eat them and there was a body left over, you know, because here until just a week or two ago, you know, we were having like a really bad drought, and, you know, fires were just breaking out all over, so I was just going to drag her out to a field and set it on fire. And you have a big fire. You know, fire had burned most of the remains and, and you know, kind of destroyed any, like, hairs and DNA evidence I left in the field, hopefully. Uh, God, I'm tired and sick again, but, uh, and so anyway, I got her into those bags, finally got her into the tub, but couldn't get her knees in there. I finally was able to maneuver a little in there. I could get the lid at least halfway on, and I taped it down. Okay, you don't take the seal. Yeah, I did, I did that yesterday. I figured we'd be sealed it. And why'd you take the lock apart? <sighs> was it the same night? Yeah, I think I did that. In the same night, Wednesday night. And then I was going to go home tonight because even that frame that was left over that I couldn't take apart was, I think, still going to be too big for the duffel bag, so I'm going to try to use my hacksaw to cut it up a little bit tonight. And did you already have all the tools that you needed to take the bike apart? Yeah. You yeah, didn't have to go anywhere to borrow any tools or anything? No, very much. Parents got me a box of tools for my 18th birthday. Okay, and you just had those in the house? Yeah. Kevin, are you okay? Yeah, I'm just nauseous again. Okay, Exhausted. Take, take a break for a second. Yeah, I guess. Okay, let's, let's take a breather for just a second. I stink. Just like in the shower. Yeah. Yeah, I got him to let me wash my hands and face a little right before they brought me in here. We're saying well, we've been up since about seven this morning. We've been going all day and out in the sun. Yeah, we're, so you're not. You okay, buddy? Okay. Oh, we need somebody just checking for the job. I think we're done. Go ahead. Have them bring somebody in. Make sure he's okay. some help here. It's 1133. Kevin, we're on end because you're just too sick to keep going. Okay. We might have an EMT. Yeah, we're going to get an EMT. He's getting an audience. We just want to make sure he's okay.